Mm. All right, Dennis Brown in the background. Water, as we know it, is an essential part of everyone's life. So when a, a culinary innovator made it known that he hasn't had water in 42 years, of course, we have some questions. And here with us this morning is internationally acclaimed culinary innovator, health and wellness influencer, my good friend. He's been on Smile a couple of times. Last time I saw him, he was on Nyamings. He's in Panama. His name is Dr. Aris Latham. And he's here to educate us on how to um, help use food to heal our bodies and stay healthy. Um, good to see you, my friend. Welcome again to Smile Jamaica. I hope all is well. Yes, thank you. Thank you, my friend, Jane. Yes, give thanks. It's interesting because I don't usually... Um, I don't usually do things similar to people bright like you, but I don't drink water either. But I suspect it's just because I don't like the taste. It's not because of the reasons that you do it. But why don't you drink water? Well, you know, my body has a limited capacity of what I can put into it. So I want to put maximum value. Water is empty. As we know it, the water that we're talking about, it, everybody talks about is empty, it's blank, and it hydrates. That's good. But my water needs to do a whole lot more, more than that. So I reach for higher heights. You know, I reach for higher heights. This, this is my water source right here. Coconut water, living water straight from life, straight from nature. So this water has more electrolytes than anything else on the planet. It hydrates, it has potassium, it has loads of minerals. Of course, it has 10% sugar, all the sugar my body needs. So I use it in the morning. This is the first thing, my inner shower with coconut water. Take a little noni juice or, you know, it's like dumping sour sop, and that's it. But I do drink water, but it has to come from a plant source, it's not from the ground. It's interesting because I feel like I'm a food scientist because yeah. I, drink, I drink coconut water every morning. Last time I saw you, you put lime in the coconut water. Why? <laughs> I got some big lemon now for it right now, you know, lemon. And uh, I have some kumquats, you know, any kind of citrus. It's like, these are sunshine. These are little balls of sunshine, you know? So yeah, but the lime is really my favorite. We have some little small key lime here in Panama, but them don't touch the spot. But why, so, but why, why, what does the lime do for the coconut water? And what does, uh, what do the two of them do for your body? Well, actually what the lime does, it balances the, the, the sugar in the coconut water, even though it's only 10%, it gives you that balance of sweet and sour. You know, we want to get harmony all the time. But the lime, I use it in the morning as my inner body soap. So it come in and it move thing out, you know, because see, while I'm sleeping at night for eight hours, I'm fasting. So the first thing in the morning now, my body is eliminated. So of course I want to take the inner shower. Many people focus on the external shower and they don't even realize the inner shower is more critical. And coconut water is my shower water. The lime is my inner body soap. And you know, some people them try them best to do them that them inner shower, but them them do it with coffee <laughs> and yeah. them kind of thing. Can you imagine if your outer shower coming from from, from, from the, the shower head, if it come out like something looking like coffee? You don't want to take no shower with that, but yet you're going to put it inside of your body. But, you know, let's go back to the old time tradition. Grandma used to say, boy, drink that coconut water and wash your heart out, please. You know, and we look, put a little Cersei in there. We just take the Cersei and just grind it in our hand with a little water and squeeze the Cersei juice, we drink it. So that's how I grow up. So I'm still maintaining the culture, maintaining the tradition and being obedient to grandma. Yeah. Doc, you've been at this for, for a number of years. One of the challenges that I have is, uh, you know, just how does the average person know what to drink, when to drink it, how to drink it, what don't I mix with it? It, it, it seems like a whole new science sometimes to me. Yes, well, the main thing is to know thyself, know the body. The body goes through a three-phase cycle every day. So the critical one is when we sleep in for those eight hours. And ideally it should be between 8 p.m. and 4 a.m. That's why the rooster in program to wake us up, you know, that's the alarm clock every morning. Coo -coo 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 -coo. Four o'clock, right? But you know, we, we get rid of the wild fowl, so we don't get that that blessing. And then from 4 a.m. to 12 noon, 
the body automatically goes into elimination because when you're fasting and when you're sleeping at night, you're fasting and you're doing the repair work. Then you have eight hours to eliminate, which is the break fast mode. But you see what I'm doing with it. Them hijack the basket and then call it breakfast and then serve you a big, big bucket of cereal, all of the grains and all these things. You don't break a fast like that. You want to break a fast with electrical foods, fruit, fruit juices. I mean, Jamaica's maintained the tradition to a great extent because you come out of the house in the morning, right up on the bus stop, the man, the peel and the orange, the fruits are right there ready for you. That's what we want. We ought to maintain that tradition. And we have our jelly coconut waiting for us as well. Then from 12 noon to 8 p.m., the body goes into the, the building mode. So we're going to put in the building materials. That's when you want to put in your, your rich, heavy food, your protein and your starches. So when I say protein, we're talking uh, things with fat, like ackee, coconut, pear, and these types of things. When we're talking plant protein particularly, and other nuts and seeds, and then the starches, the grains, the beans, and the roots. So we, we've gathered some roots here, and we have juiced the roots to show you if you must mess with roots, then you should juice it. Because the roots starch settle at the bottom. Roots are full of starch. This is just the ginger. So look at how much we have like one third of the ginger juice. It's starch. Some of them, the closer they grow to the surface of the earth, they have no starch, like the beetroot. And look at the onion, the red onion, no starch. The closer it grows to the surface of the earth, less starch. When it goes down deep down into the earth now, like here, we have the look at the look yampi, the nyampi that we call him here in Panama. This look of something right here. The nyampi. I juice it, and this one we get. No, not one drip of water. We get, yeah, <laughs> we get just starch. And wow. this is the, the, the pulp that leave over. Wow. So the deeper you go into the earth, the more starch. So we have to be careful with what we're doing. You know, I don't even, I, I, I mean, I never even try doing the, the cassava mm -hmm. because it, not one drip of, 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 of water in it either. The, the yellow yam, the, the Trelawney yam, <laughs> the Negro yam, the one that makes your Negroes, <laughs> no, no water in it either. So them thing, them, they're not, they're, they're not conducive to proper health. But if you're going to eat the starches, we recommend that you get the lighter starches, the lighter grains, the finer grains, because the larger grains have gluten you know, and the body can't break it down as well. So, but you have to soak your, your grains and your peas, soak them even before you cook them so that the body can be able to digest them a whole lot better. Doc, Dr. Aris, you said cook, but you're a raw food specialist. Do you cook anything at all? Well, no, you see, the, the foundation of my philosophy is the sun. The name of my cuisine is sun-fired foods. So the, the sun cooked my food. So when, when the banana tree blossoms until we have a ripe banana, that's a whole year of cooking by the sun. The sun come every day for a few hours to every village, every hamlet, every ghetto, every suburb in the world, <laughs> unless you live behind God's back, as grandma used to say. We're living in the sunshine. So when the banana is ripe and ready, it's cooked to perfection. So we have to wait. But when you take the, some of us know because we have the power of fire, we take the green banana and we boil it, trying to force ripe it. You know, turn it into sugar, it's still starch. But yes, I do cook as well. We can burn some pot. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing, being consulting work, like when I was up at Strawberry Hill. When I was up at Strawberry Hill as the, the consulting executive chef, when uh, our great prime minister, well, former Prime Minister Edward Sierra used to come up there and they have the big roast pork, the pig roasting from the, from the something there. I said, okay, good. Let's make a guava jelly because I have to direct my chef. Let's make a, <clears throat> a guava jelly just with guava and dry pineapple and let's glaze that pork with it. Let's glaze that pig so that it can be able to digest. So the guava jelly is a good digestive aid. And then we show them how to mix a little green salad with that. 
Yes. And then we do a little steam rice and those type of things. We do the coconut rice and peas, but we make coconut cream. We don't boil on the coconut into the rice. So I do conscious cookery as well. Yes. But I reserve that for certain levels. Otherwise, I am the father of ethical gourmet raw food cuisine, as acknowledged by the Oxford Encyclopedia of Food and Drink. Hey, Doc, it's always a pleasure talking Great to, to you. Great to see you, my friend. Great to see you. <laughs> True. Dr. Aris Latham, internationally acclaimed culinary innovator, health and wellness influencer. 10 minutes to your health. We'll do it again next Thursday. Uh, let me say this before we go. While uh, Dr. Latham doesn't drink water, we are not encouraging our viewers to do the same. That's, that's your choice. Um, but he explained the reasons and he explained it uh, beautifully. Mm -hmm. And our bodies use water in all the cells, the organs, the tissues, to help regulate body temperature and maintain other bodily functions because our bodies lose water through breathing, sweating, and digestion. Uh, so it's uh, crucial to rehydrate. But you've heard me say it all the time and it surprised a lot of people because I'm into sport that I don't drink a whole lot of water. But 10 minutes to your health. We'll do it again next Thursday.